Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hubby Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It is so good to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Tab today. And we also want to welcome all of you watching us live right now via our Tab telecast and our YouTube channel. Like, love, share, comment, engage with us. Let us know where you're watching us from. If you're on the road, pull over. All right. And, uh, and let us know. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Isn't God good? Thank Will you put your hands together and uh, give a round of applause to our Tab band for leading us today. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Hallelujah. How many of you love the Lord today? Amen. Amen. Well, we're in a series of messages this September entitled In Between. We've been asking and answering one simple question. What are we to do uh, between now and the rapture of the church? We discovered this summer that the next prophetic piece in God's apocalyptic puzzle is the rapture of the church, the catching away of his people to heaven. How many of you are ready to go to heaven? Amen. The older I get, the more I'm looking forward to going. I don't want to speed it up, but I'm just looking forward to it. You know, it's kind of like a vacation. You know, I'm looking forward to a vacation. And well, maybe I want to speed up that. Yeah, maybe I want to speed up the vacation. But uh, it's always good to have a vision and a dream and a plan and a purpose. And God has certainly given us to that. Uh, for those of you that have your finger on the pulse of uh, God's apocalyptic puzzle, there was a, another piece of the puzzle that fell in this past Friday. Uh, the red heifers were shipped and mailed, I should say, by airplane from Texas to Israel. Now, what does that mean? Well, uh, the red heifer is very significant in the building of the third temple. How many of you know there's going to be a third temple built, all right, uh, during the great tribulation right after the rapture of the church? Well, to sanctify, to set apart the people of God, I should say the Israelites, uh, and to sanctify the temple mount for the building of the temple, they needed what? They needed a pure red heifer. Now, we're in no shortage of red heifers. That's not a problem. We got red cows everywhere, don't we? And uh, the problem is, uh, according to the book of Leviticus, it has to be a pure red heifer. It cannot have any more than one, is it one or two? Two, two colors. It could be a white hair or a black hair on the whole cow. All the other colors of the cow have to be red. And they look at it with magnifying glasses. They go over the whole cow. And that was, those are hard to find. I mean, you find a cow with all red hair, you're doing good. It's taken them thousands of years to do that. Thousands of years. Matter of fact, they've been looking, looking, looking. They started breeding them uh, and, uh, in Texas, and, and all of a sudden they've got them, and they mailed them. They shipped them this Friday to Israel. They're ready to go. They're ready to be sacrificed to purify the people, to purify the Temple Mount, so the third temple can be rebuilt. Now, we know uh, that is huge in regards to the timeline uh, because there are certain things, there are certain sequence of events that have to take place. And uh, so everything is kind of, again, like we said this summer, coming into alignment. I mean, the puzzle pieces are coming together. And if we, uh, we have uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, we can see things. Uh, beginning to come into place and come into position for the rapture of the church. And it's time to what? It's time to get ready. It's time to get prepared uh, for what God is doing and get excited so that you're not left behind. Amen. You know, even our dogs and our, our, our I don't know about the cats, but our dog knows, uh, our, our dog is, is pretty smart. I don't know how many of you got a smart dog. You got it. Okay. All right. And they just, they, they just know stuff. Well, uh, we have a beautiful bulldog named Brizzo and Brizzo knows when we're getting ready to leave. Now, not just leave, you know, to go, you know, to, you know, Chick-fil-A. 
I'm talking about like leaving on vacation and, and we're going to be gone a long time. I mean, he starts getting nervous and uh, he starts sitting by the door and he, he's, he's following mama all around. He's at her heels because he, he knows when, you know, the, the shoes get out and the suitcases get out and, and Hope's got her pillow. And, and uh, I mean, he, they're getting ready to leave for a long time. And he doesn't want to, what, be left behind because he sees all these things coming together. All these pieces are beginning to and he understands. Now, why can't we understand when these pieces start coming into alignment? Hey, something's getting ready to happen. Something's, someone's getting ready to leave. And who's getting ready to leave? We are. We're getting ready to leave. Jesus is coming back. Whether you believe it or not, he's coming back. And I hope he's coming back for you. If you're not ready to meet the Lord, we'll make sure you're ready before you leave here today. Amen? Well, I've got a lot of good ground, great ground, actually, to cover today. So let's jump right into and answer that question once again from God's Word. What are we to be about in the in-between times between now and uh, the rapture of the church? Jesus said in Luke 19, 13, occupy. Someone say occupy. Occupy till when? Till I come. In other words, we're to be about the master's business. Now, the word occupy means literally to take up, to fill, to hold, and to perform the functions thereof. We're to be busy. We're not to be sitting on our blessed assurances, just waiting passively and complacently and apathetically until Jesus comes. There are some things from the Word of God. We're looking at it this month, taking our time, going through the Word. What are we to be about, right, until He comes? And, uh, and then that way, when He comes, we're what? We're ready. We're ready. Uh, I, I, I hope I get to preach uh, soon here. We'll see when the Lord releases me. Matthew 25, talking about the ten virgins, right? Uh, and their oil. Five were ready and five were not. Five got, got to go and five got left behind. And I don't want you to be left behind. You don't want to be left behind. Matter of fact, just go ahead and elbow your neighbor real good and strong. Wake him up and say, don't get left behind. Don't get left behind. <laughs> My land, if you think it's bad now, you ain't seen nothing yet. All right, there's a storm a brewing on the horizon, and that cloud has got a name. It's called tribulation. Now, the good news is there's a storm before the tribulation storm. Well, what's that storm? That's called the glory storm. That's called the goodness of God storm, the end time revival. I mean, there's going to be a wave uh, of, of God's spirit and a move of God's spirit across America and around the world right before the storm comes, uh, the tribulation storm, the likes of which we've never seen before. And I think uh, God is saving his best move for his last move. Amen. Someone say the best is yet to come. I believe it. I believe it. You know I do. All right, let's jump right in. Well, I want to share with you today seven P's to do in between. God willing, we're going to get out of here before two. All right, so uh, <laughs> someone say, take your time, Pastor. Take your time. Take your time, man. Now, don't lie. Don't lie. What's the first thing we're to be about? Uh, all of these begin with the letter P. Number one, be praising. Hey, we did that today. Check. Check mark. Psalm 34 verse 1 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, not complaints, His praise will always be on my lips. So it is a blessing to the Lord to be what? To be praising Him. To be glorifying Him. To be worshiping Him. To give Him thanks and praise for who He is, for what He's done, and for what He's about to do. Sometimes you just have to have a pre-praise. Say, hey, Lord, I'm going to praise you. I'm a, I'm, I know what you're getting ready to do. Like, we know God's getting ready to move. We know. I mean, I can sense it. I mean, you know, mama's getting ready to have a baby. They can sense that thing. There's some, something's getting ready to happen down here. At least that's what I'm told. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm told that, you know. You got this sense. I better, well, I, I can speak from experience. I was told we got to get to the hospital now. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. Am I sure she grabbed me? <laughs> I mean, I, yes, ma'am. We're going to the hospital. Amen. <laughs> and she was the one having the baby, but the nurse was taking care of me. I was like, oh, I'm about passed out. True story. True story about, I mean, passed out. I was like, man, who's having the baby here? Give me the orange juice. I need some crackers. What are we talking about? Praise. All right. Bring praise. <laughs> Psalm 84, 4. Blessed are those who dwell in your, come on, say it with me, tabernacle, for they are ever praising you. 
right? What are we to be doing about as the people of God before He comes? We're to be praising God. Boy, the praise of God will be on our lips. Oh, the goodness of God. I mean, you know, it's easy again. That's a kind of our fallen sinful nature to, to readily and, and identify the negative. Come on. How many? Is, it's easier to see what's going wrong than what's going right. But just because some things are going wrong doesn't mean everything's going wrong. We need to identify, pick out, and point out the good things that are happening in our lives, around our lives, in spite of our lives, and give God praise for it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. No, we, we, we've got a lot to praise God for. I mean, this we could, we could open this whole can of worms up, but we've got a lot to praise God for. And what are we to be doing between now and the coming of the Lord? Boy, let the praise of the Lord be on our lips. Amen. Amen. God's brought all of us a mighty long way. We Thank God we aren't uh, where we were uh, and, and we're not where we want to be. But my land, we've come away. We've come a long way. And uh, we need to praise God for it. Uh, Luke 2.20, this is a famous passage of Scripture every December, especially on Christmas Eve. But the Holy Spirit led me to this. It's so good. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. For all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they've been told. So what, what are some other things we need to be praising God for? For all the things we've heard. For all the things we've seen. But what are you hearing? What are you seeing God do? That's what the shepherds gave God thanks and praise for 2,000 years ago in the, in the, in the Judean uh, hillside, right outside the little uh, village of Bethlehem. Amen. How many of you know Jesus was born in Bethlehem? How many of you know Jesus was born in Bethlehem? Don't make me turn to Luke 2. All right. Yeah. Bethlehem, and they were they returned giving thanks and praise for all they'd been all they had heard and all they had seen, and I love this, which were just as they'd been told. In other words, it was a fact. See, they were told. Remember, in the hills tonight, a savior has been born to you, right? And he's wrapped in swaddling clothes and he's lying in a manger. Go and see. And then they went and saw, and then they returned. Give me thanks and praise for what they had heard and seen that was just as they've been told. You know what we need to be giving God thanks and praise for? Right here. For all the things that we hear from the Word of God each and every Sunday, each and every day in your quiet time with the Lord. And, and we're seeing things. We're seeing manifestation. We're seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. We're seeing things, I mean, just unbelievable. And we need to be giving what? We need to be giving praise to God for that. Luke 5. Luke 5. 24 through 26, we need to be giving God thanks and praise for the ways in which He shows up in our lives and changes and transforms us. Luke 5 says, I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God for forgiveness of sins. Amen. So Jesus said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. Immediately, so I'm going to say immediately. Immediately, he, the man, the paralytic, stood up in front of them all. That'll get your attention. Oh, I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, I'm looking forward. To, that's going to happen here. Amen. amen. I got one amen right there. Hallelujah. You know what amen means? It means I'm in agreement and so be it. Let's see it. How many want to see this stuff? Yes. My land, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8, if you need that reference. Immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he'd been lying on, and went home. What did he do? Praising God. Boy, if you ever receive a miracle, you ever receive something from the Lord, just I don't know what it is. Give God thanks and praise for it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were all filled, they were filled with awe and said, We've seen remarkable things today. I hope to say so. My land, a paralytic brought in on a mat, gets up, jumps up, starts walking, carries uh, what was under him. He's got a hold of. Amen. And he walks out. He's praising. Oh, praise God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. The great God we serve. Wow. He's a mighty God of miracles, signs, and wonders. And everybody else starts to praise him. My land, we've seen some things today at church. See, some of you need to just start showing up at church just to see what God's going to do. I just, I mean, I can't wait to see what God does. I'm talking about me. Because if you think I have anything to do with any of this, you're wrong. 
I'm human just like you, man just like you. It's the Lord, amen? Yeah. I mean, I've seen God do wonderful things, not just in my life, in our family's lives, in our friends' lives, in your lives. I mean, and, and you, it just bursts praise. Oh, praise the Lord, PTL. Hallelujah. What's the word hallelujah mean? Praise the Lord. That's what it means, brother. Amen. We need to be praising God for the ways in which he manifests miracles, signs, and wonders. I mean, think about the way. Think about this miracle. Put yourselves on that mat. And Jesus healed you. And you're walking. And you, and you walked out of there. I mean, your life has changed, transformed. His family, everybody who knew him, his little friends that tore up the tile in his roof. I mean, yeah, now, thank God he, you know, Jesus was a carpenter. He can fix the roof. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. And y'all know there's no drywall in, in Israel. My, there's, I mean, it's stone. Y'all going to go with me next time. Amen. We're going to see it. All right, the last, the last scripture here, and i got to get move on. i got a lot of good ground. Acts 2. Every day, talking about the church, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They, break, they broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily. Those who are being saved. You know what? What should be characteristic of the body of Christ? We're getting together. We're praising God. We've got glad and sincere hearts. I mean, it, it, it's a contagious community. People want to join it where God's moving, where God's, I mean, you know, acting and, and tra changing and transforming lives. And people are giving glory and thanks and praise to him. The Lord added. Someone say the Lord added. The Lord added daily. To those who are what? Who are being saved. All right, the first thing we're to be about, we're to be praising God. Amen? So praise God, praise God. Every day, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and if something comes across that's negative, that's bad, you say, well, praise God, God's going to fix it. God's going to change it. Everything in your life is subject to change because God's still on the throne. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, number two, write this down, the second P. Be pleasing. We're to be pleasing to the Lord. Psalm 69, 30 through 31. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. We just did that. We just talked about that. This will please the Lord. You want to please the Lord? Praise the Lord. When we praise the Lord, when we worship the Lord, when we do what we just did, it pleases God. It pleases Jehovah. It pleases your Lord and Master when we praise, praise Him. You, we, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I want to please the Lord. I want the Lord to be happy with me. How many of you want the Lord to be happy with you? Yeah. Amen. I don't want the other thing. I don't want Him to be mad at me or disappointed in me. I want Him to be pleased with me. Well, praising the Lord pleases the Lord. Watch this now. More than an ox or a red heifer. Yeah. <laughs> Are you seeing this thing? More than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. In other words, all these sacrifices were made, why? For the sins of the people. And again, he's pleased with that because, again, it, it, in the Old Testament, I should say, it, it, the blood covered the sin of the people. But you know what is more pleasing than that? Praising the Lord. Living for the Lord. Living right for the Lord. Romans 12, verse 1. The Apostle Paul talks about pleasing the Lord with our bodies. Notice this. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. This is your true and proper worship. So not only do we, we, we bless the Lord and we please the Lord with the praise of our lips, but we please the Lord with what? The living of our lives. How we live. How we live. This is my father's favorite verse, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Offer your bodies as what? Well, living sacrifices. Yeah, living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to the Lord. It's a word to live for the Lord. And that when we live for the Lord, it pleases the Lord. 
You know what? Let me just say this right now. What you're doing right now with your body pleases the Lord. When we come to church, when we read our Bibles, when we pray, when we help people, when we serve people, it pleases the Lord. Amen? Amen. And, and, and I want to be a blessing. I want Him to look down on all of us. I want God to look down on this church and be pleased. Colossians 1, 9 through 2. Paul says, we continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will. Amen. God, get, show us your will. Amen. What do you want? Through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life, here it is, worthy of the Lord and please Him in every way. Right? We're to please the Lord in every way. Thought, word, and deed. Bearing fruit... In every good work, what's the fruit that we bear? The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithful, gentle, self-control. That's the fruit we're supposed to be bearing. We're supposed to be apples and oranges and grapes and figs, right? Bearing fruit in every good work, watch this now, and growing in the knowledge of God. So it pleases the Lord. Every time we what? Live for the Lord? Every time we grow in our knowledge of the Lord? Every time we, we go to the, to the Word of God and we study it? Again, this is our textbook. Right? The, the B-I-B-L-E is an acronym. Basic instructions before leaving earth. Don't need a Bible in heaven. There are no Bibles in heaven. I'm kind of sad about that. Matter of fact, Hope asked me, aren't you going to be sad your Bible ain't going to be in heaven? I said, yeah. I said, my land, I spent a lot of time in that thing. I'm thinking about, maybe I can bury that thing deep enough that when it burns, the whole world burns, I can go back and dig it up. I'll put it in our tornado shelter. All right, there we go. And <laughs> but, but we're to be what? We're to be pleasing the Lord. And this pleases the Lord, growing in our knowledge, growing in our, our, our experience of Him. Amen? It pleases the Lord. What we're doing right now pleases Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 18. Here's another way we please the Lord. Through our giving. Paul said to the Philippians, I've received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Aphrodite the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice. Watch this now. And your gifts are pleasing to God. Every time you and I put our tithes and our offerings in that box, we're pleasing the Lord. It takes money to do ministry. And it takes more money to do more ministry. Amen. And, when, and that's what Paul's talking about. I, was, I, ha, I had a need, but now I'm amply supplied. I'm, 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 I'm taken care of. Why? Because the church gave to the ministry of God. And, and Paul said, listen, your giving is a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, and it's pleasing to the Lord. Every time you and I give to the Lord, he looks down and he smiles. Amen. Amen. And it's, a more, it's more blessed to what? To give than to receive. We talked about that last Sunday. It's a blessing to give. Something happens in our hearts when we give. If, 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 can I give you a secret? Can I share you a secret about giving? To really experience this, you got to put in more than two quarters. I'm serious. Because it doesn't make sense. The more you give, the more blessed you are. The more, it just... It, it just, it's unbelievable. It, it, in your carnal mind, it doesn't make sense, right? Because, you know, sometimes you write a large check, and you're thinking, my land, holy cow. I mean, I've, I've written checks this past week. I had to sit down. I'm like, oh. I mean, I wrote a, I wrote a check pretty large this past week. I was like, I got I to gotta, I gotta sit down. I got to sit down. I mean, in the, in the natural but in the spiritual, it's like, whoo, man, that's, that was a, that was, that was, that felt good. That felt great. Why? Because we please the Lord. We please the Lord. Try Jesus. Matter of fact, you want to, you want to know another secret? I'm just sharing secrets today. The only area that God Almighty, the Lord of the universe, gives us permission to test him on is in the area of our giving. He says, test me. Test me. 
Try this giving thing. Try giving abundantly and generously to, to, to my kingdom and to my work. And see if I will not pour out a blessing unto you that you will not have room enough to contain. Amen. I mean, it's just it's true. God, that's it. That's the only area you can test him in. Don't test him in any other area. All right? Because we'll come up lacking. But there's something about giving that pleases the Lord and blesses us. And, and if you haven't experienced this, just add a, about two or three or four zeros to your check this morning and you will. <laughs> I'm serious. It's great. And, and it's to be experienced. I mean, it is a blessing to the Lord and it pleases the Lord. It pleases the Lord because God turns that, that gift into ministry. Amen. 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 All right. The third thing we're to be about as the people of God between now and the rapture of the church, we're to be praying, praying. First Thessalonians 5, 17 says we're to be praying without ceasing. We're to never stop talking to God. We're to be in constant communication. Now, I believe firmly in a quiet time, a personal time that you have with the Lord every day, whether it's morning, noon, night, whatever, you need to set aside a time where you have an appointment with the Lord, appointment with the King, Right? where you and him are in the secret place, wherever that's at, and that secret place might be your car on the way to work or on your car on the way home. I don't know. doesn't matter. But you and the Lord are talking, and everything else, the radio's off, the TV's off, the phone's on the charger and set to stun. Right? And it's you and the Lord. Amen. I believe in that. We need to have personal quiet times. But my land, don't let the only time you, you talk to the Lord and the Lord talks to you is in your quiet time. Talk to the Lord wherever you're at, wherever you're going. Just, just converse with Him. And, and, and we're offering a tab group right now on Thursday nights on prayer. If you want to know more about prayer, it's an opportunity to sign up right now. Hey, it's a really good book. All right, really good book on prayer. <laughs> so, so, so learn how to pray. Amen. Because uh, communication with the Lord and, and Him communicating with you is, is at, the, at the foundation of your relationship with the Lord. There's 16 ways the Lord talks to us. 16. God's talking more than you're talking, believe it or not. It's unbelievable. God's always communicating. God wants to talk to you more than you want to hear from Him. Write that down. God wants to talk to you more than you want to hear from Him. But here's the problem with most of us, and I include myself in this. I know whenever I can't hear his voice, I've got the volume of the world tuned up too loud. Yes. We got to just tune out. And even the, how many of you know you can be in a silent room in a silent house and your head is full volume? Yep. I mean, it just, and we got to tune tune the world down. And then all of a sudden we can hear his voice. Amen. As God's voice is still and small, it's a quiet voice. It's a gentle voice. All right. If you ever hear the loud voice of the Lord, you better brace yourself. If he shouts at you, you're, 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 you're getting ready to go over the edge. Does that make sense? Don't want to hear the loud voice of the Lord. All right, I want to hear his still small voice, but to hear his still small voice talking, we've got to turn the volume down on the world. Amen. Luke 21, verse 36. Jesus said, Be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of God. We need to be praying every day because, again, we're getting closer and closer and closer to the rapture of the church. Lord, keep me ready. Lord, keep me, keep me uh, on fire for you. Keep me prepared for your coming. Amen. Amen. Cleanse my heart. Keep short accounts with the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, can I make just a quick aside? Can you give me an extra 30 seconds, maybe 60? Next Sunday, someone say next Sunday. Next Sunday. All right, next Sunday I had a message. Oh, it was good. All prepared. Oh, I was excited about it. And Liz said, nope. I'm like, oh, what do you mean no? I already had it done. He goes, next weekend's kind of a big weekend, Tim. I said, well, I know what it is. What's next weekend? It's Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the new year. 
in Judaism, in, 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 in Jewish circles. And it is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets is next Sunday. Happy New Year, next Sunday, right? And Jesus is coming back. The rapture is going to happen when? On the Feast of Trumpets. So he says, you're going to talk about Rosh Hashanah. I said, Amen. Amen. All right. So don't don't miss it now, because next Sunday is really important. I mean, I'm going to blast all all of you media wise this this next week. Emails, Facebook, Instagram. I'm not on Instagram, but M Mimi Mindy is on Instagram. We'll get you through Instagram next Sunday. Don't miss next Sunday. Don't miss it. The red heifers have landed. I mean, I, I you know. No man knows the day or the hour that Jesus is going to come back, but we know the season. We do. Again, Jesus fulfilled all four uh, spring feasts in his first coming, and he will fulfill all three fall feasts in his what? In his second coming, and it begins with the rapture of the church on the Feast of Trumpets next weekend. You think about this, we could be in heaven seven days from now. I, Lord, keep me ready. Let me pray that I may be able to escape, to escape what is about to happen. What's about to happen? The, the tribulation. We got to stay prepared. We got to stay, stay right, stay on our knees. Amen. How many of you are going to come back next Sunday? Amen. You might come in two weeks and we won't be here. You'll be like, oh, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Pastor Tim told me. <laughs> no, if you're not here, Jesus can find you even in Clinton. All right. Even there. Jude 1, 20 and 21 says this. Dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in God's love as you wait for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring you into eternal life. So what are we supposed to be doing between now and the time that Jesus brings us into eternal life? We're to be praying. We're to be praying in the Spirit. We're to be praying with the Spirit. In other words, uh, there's times where, you know, you're praying about your stuff, and then all of a sudden an, an idea, a name, a face will come across your screen. You know, Cousin Kenny, Aunt Alice, you know, and, and you just sense the moving of the Spirit to pray for Cousin Kenny and Aunt Alice. You don't know why. Don't know what's going on with Cousin Kenny. Don't know what's going on with Aunt Alice. It doesn't matter, but Jesus knows. The Holy Spirit knows. And you're sensing this, this moving of the Spirit to pray for them. Come on now. Have you ever done that? Doesn't make sense in your mind. I have no idea what's going on. But Lord, just be with them. And then, you know, many times a couple days go by, maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe a year. And they say, boy, I was really going through something. I was headed down the interstate, and there was a semi that kind of lost control, and I mean, I was saved. And your prayers may be dispatched angels. You never know. Be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. And, and many times when it doesn't make sense, that's exactly the Holy Spirit, right? His name, I mean, I'll in. But you, you, just, you just go with it. Someone say, go with it. Go with God. Go with God. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit, there it is, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and all kinds of requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So we can pray about a lot, a great many things. But one thing we're to be praying for is who? One another. We're to be praying for one another. My land. I, I don't want to ask this question because I don't want anybody not to raise their hand, but I hope you have a prayer list of names and people, family, friends, co-workers, people that you love and care for and you want to see with you in heaven. And you're praying for those people every single day. I hope you're praying for one another. I hope you're praying for this church. My land, I hope you're praying for me. I pray for you. I do. Every single day. Many of you, all the members, I pray by name. You remember this church? You're on my man out by name in the presence of God every single day, without exception, without exception. I pray for you. I ask you, please put Pastor Tim and Mindy on your prayer list. You know, there's only one thing harder, I believe, on this planet than being a pastor. 
It's being the pastor's wife. I mean, it is tough. <laughs> tough stuff. Tough stuff. People are tough on me. That's all right. I can take it. They're really bad on her. Really tough on her. So pray for me. Pray for her. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. The next P. Are we, are we doing all right? I'm going to get you the country bucket before the Baptist. Don't worry. <laughs> Be preserving. Persevering. Not preserving. Persevering. I read my own notes wrong. <laughs> preserving. Persevering. Boy, how many of you know we need to persevere? Whew. Blessed is the one who what? Perseveres under trial. How many of you got some hate mail? If you, if you don't have any haters, you're not doing something right. How many of you been, you know, blocked from Facebook from time to time? Well, I haven't done that. Well, just share some stuff from the tab and you will. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial. Having stood the test, that person, someone say that person, that perseveres and stands the trial and the test, that person will receive the crown of life Ooh. that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Right? Hey, it's not. It's becoming harder and harder to become a to remain a Christian in America. Who would have ever thought? that Christians would be persecuted in America. We would always read stories about, you know, Christians in China and Christians in Asia and Christians in the Middle East and their underground church and their... Are you with me? It's come to our shore. It's come to our shore. And, and, and people are persecuting us. Some of you know this. Some of you are even just persecuted, not necessarily, you know, physically, but maybe emotionally, verbally from family members. Well, why are you going to church? Do you really, does it really take all that? Yeah, it does, brother. It does. And I'm going to persevere. You persevere. Look to your neighbor right now. And I mean, tell him, persevere. 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 The crown of life is awaiting you if you'll persevere. Don't give up. This isn't the time to sit down. It's the time to stand up. This isn't the time to be quiet. It's the time to what? To speak out. This isn't a time to retreat. It's a time to go forward. Come on now. I'm serious. There's, there's a line being drawn in the sand in the kingdom of God. The colder getting colder and the hotter getting hotter. Amen. The lukewarmness is, is God's removing it from the church. I mean, I, I, you look at some of these cold churches and the doctrines and the things and the people they got preaching behind their pulpits. Men in dresses. It's craziness. Come on now. In this city. In this city. Drag Queen Sunday. And the drag queen is going to lead praise and worship. And we got the drag queen preaching from the Word of God. Cold. The cold Jesus said this. Don't let it. Matthew 24. Read it again. Luke 21. Mark 13. Pick a chapter. It doesn't matter. Jesus said in the end times the cold will get colder and the hot will get hotter. How many of you want to stay hot? How many of you want to get hotter for the Lord? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, I want to be so on fire for the Lord. When He comes back, there's no doubt I'm going up. There's no doubt this church is going. I mean, ever. There it goes. <laughs> and you can have it. Because <laughs> we're out of here. Amen. But you got to persevere through some stuff. James 5, verse 11. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You know what? We're blessed when we're persecuted. We're blessed when we're slandered. We're blessed when we're mocked for the Lord. Amen. We're blessed when we're, we're, we're persecuted for the truth, for, for integrity and honesty. We're blessed. It's not easy. Again, remember, the people of God need to have thick skin and soft hearts. Sometimes we get that reversed. We have thin skin and hard hearts. You got to have some thick skin. You got to take it until you make it. 1 Timothy 4.16, watch your life and doctrine closely, Paul said, persevere in them, because if you do, you will save yourself and your hearers. Amen? We need to persevere in our life and in our doctrine for the Lord. Boy, there's, there's more and more false teachings coming out all the time. I, I just It amazes me. The stuff that's being, I mean, everybody that I think today has got like a social media account is an expert. 
and, and they use their platform to preach whatever they want to preach. You better watch your life and doctrine, right? That it lines up with the Word of God. Because it doesn't really matter what I say or what they say. What does God say? What does God say about said subject? Whatever that subject is, we better know what it is about. Amen? Hebrews 10, verse 36. You need to persevere so that when you've done the will of God, here it is, you will receive what He's promised you. Well, what's one, just one of the promises. If we'll persevere, heaven. You'll be promised heaven. You'll go to heaven. If you stand your ground, if you persevere in the will of God, the wisdom of God, and the Word of God. I mean, we'll be happy. Your, your feet are going to move so fast when you, they hit those golden streets. You'll be glad you persevered. And we'll look back and go, oh, that was nothing compared to this, compared to the glory that we now stand. Can we go to Revelation? Do we dare do it? Revelation 2. Jesus said to the church, I know your deeds. Whew. Your hard work and your perseverance. Isn't that interesting? God sees us persevering, standing firm in the faith. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have, per here it is, you have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Don't grow weary. The Bible says don't grow weary in well-doing. Amen? Just keep that. We talked about the first thing and the first point in this message series all the way back three weeks ago. I said the most important thing is to be loving. We love. We love God with everything we got. We love people. We love ourselves. We even love our enemies. Why? Because we're standing. We're not growing weary in our walk with the Lord. We're persevering. We just, we, and here's, a, I'm going to be honest with you. We don't have to persevere for much long. The Lord is coming. Jesus is coming soon and very soon. I mean, even if, even if, we, even if He doesn't come back for another 50 years, that's, that's going to be pretty quick. He could come back next Sunday. He could. He could. And He well might. He might just say, I'm gonna, <laughs> we're out of here. Can I go on? Yes, Pastor, yes. All right, well, here's a tough one. I struggle with this. Be patient. I wish this wasn't in the Word of God. I mean, you ever read the Bible and go, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Being patient is hard. Waiting is hard. Can I get an amen from somebody that knows what I'm talking about? James 5, Jesus' half-brother. Be patient, brethren and sistren. Not just the guys. Be patient, brethren, until when? Until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth? It's tough being a farmer. I know some. I'm related to some. It's tough stuff. They sow the seed in the spring, and then they what? And then they wait. And then they wait. And then they wait. And they wait. Waiting patiently until it receives the early and latter rain, you also be patient, establishing your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. We just got to be patient. Now, again, patient doesn't mean we, we sit back complacently, apathetically doing nothing. The, the actual translation of the word patient is to wait expectingly. To be waiting expectantly. How many of you ever invited somebody over to dinner at your house? All right, six o'clock. Come over at six o'clock. We're going to have dinner together. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a great time of fellowship and food, right? And and and, and five thirty comes, and you're you're getting excited. You're waiting patiently. Five forty-five, five fifty, five fifty-five. What are you doing? Coming down. Wow, man, it's 558, weren't it? Yeah. You're, you're waiting patiently, but you're waiting expectantly for someone to show up. He who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. 
Are you listening? Are, do you understand what we're doing? What, who are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jesus. Who are we looking for? We're looking for Jesus. We know the, the time, the season, the Feast of Trumpets. Next Sunday. <laughs> Actually, it's this. <laughs> Maybe we ought to do that after church. We all go out of church if we're still here and we look up. <laughs> and then we go to the country bucket. All right? And we eat together. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 7. Is that where I'm at? Be patient for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. Wait expectantly for Jesus Christ to be revealed. Amen. Praise God. Every day we probably ought to just look up and say, man, is today the day. Is the day, is the, today the day He's coming back. Romans 8, 25. If we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. See, some of us are hoping for some stuff. Hoping for a breakthrough. Hoping for deliverance. Hoping for a healing. Come on now. Hoping for, you know, finances. Hoping for a husband. <laughs> Some of you are hoping for a wife. That's great. That's wonderful. We wait for it patiently. We're looking. We're not sitting back passively. We're expecting God to move to answer our prayers. Amen. Romans 12, 12. In, be joyful in hope. There we go. Patient in affliction. Be joyful in hope. We're waiting joyfully. We're waiting patiently. Patient in affliction. Faithful what? In prayer. in prayer. Ephesians 4 verse 2 says, Be patient, bearing with one another in love. All right. So we're being patient with God, and we need to be patient with who? With one another. Amen. Be patient. None of us are perfect. I'll be the first one to throw my hand. Pastor Tim is not perfect. Most of the time I get it wrong. Ask my wife. <laughs> Did you hear that little chuckle? Did you hear that chuckle, Facebook land? We all get it wrong from time to time. Amen. We need great, have grace with each other. We need to have grace and patience with one another. Come on. Can I get a good amen right there? Amen. 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 We're all works in progress and in process. We're all on the what? Potter's wheel. God's the potter. We're the clay, right? We're on that wheel. And just like a potter, he takes out the bad and inserts the good, puts some, throws some water on us, right, so we don't burn up on the wheel. You know, that clay's probably thinking, I'm dying down here. You're killing me. You got your hand all up in me, in my business. Yeah. Because remember last Sunday, he's trying to conform us to Christ's likeness. He's trying to make us like Jesus. He's got to get the old Tim out so he can get the new Jesus in. Right. Amen. You know, there's within every single one of us on this shoulder and that shoulder, there's, you know, the carnal Tim and there's the Christian Tim. Mm -hmm. There's the crazy Tim and then there's the Jesus Tim, right? We're trying to kill this guy. Get this guy crucified, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this guy can live, right? And that's what Jesus is up to. Be, we need to be patient with one another in what? In love. In love. Revelation 3.10. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. Did you see that? Revelation 3.10 Keep the commands of God. Endure patiently. Why? Because he's coming. He's coming back in the rapture of the church. And there's a storm cloud rising uh, uh, on, on, the, on the plains of humanity. The hour of trial is coming. But watch this now. The Bible says right here, Revelation 3. Jesus says, these words are in red. I will also keep you from the hour of trial. He removes his church from the earth before, someone say before, before, before the tribulation. Amen. And that tribulation is coming upon what? The whole world, the whole world. 
is going to be affected during that day and time. But not us. Why? Because we're enduring now. We're holding to the commands of God. We're loving God. We're pleasing God. We're praising God. We're praying to God. And He's going to what? He's going to keep us from that hour, that time of testing. Hallelujah. Oh, here's a good one. The next P, be peaceful. Not only be patient, but be peaceful. Compound word, full of peace. Now, how many of you by hands, go ahead and raise them. How many of you could use some more peace today? Whew, peace of mind, peace of heart, peace in relationships, pre peace with family, peace with crazy cousin Eddie. I don't know. We all need more peace. And we are to be full of peace. It's God's will for us to be full of peace. 2 Peter 3, 12 through 14. Peter says, As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. How many of you are looking forward to the day of, of the Lord? We're speeding its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire. The elements will melt in heat. But in keeping with His promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and new earth. Amen. Where righteousness dwells. So then, what do we do in, in the in-between? So then, dear brothers, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with Him. How, how do we receive and how can we be full of peace? Here's how. By being at peace with God. When you get this relationship right, these relationships get right. Right? I have to have peace with God before I can have peace with my brother, peace with my sister. And that's what this says. Make every effort to be at peace with God. Be at peace with Him. And you can be at peace with Him by the end of this service today. I'm going to give you that opportunity. Philippians 4 verse 7 says, May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, it's God's peace that guards our minds and our hearts from all the craziness that's going on in the world. It's a shelter. It's a shelter from the storms of life. Rome, or excuse me, John verse 14, chapter 14, verse 27. Jesus says to his disciples and to us, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. We need peace. Boy, I tell you what, I know, I know so many people, and you do too, that they're anything but peaceful. They're filled. I, I've never seen such a day and time with people struggling with anxiety orders, panic attacks. I mean, it just is unbelievable. There's never been such a time we need, we need this more than now than ever. And Jesus says, I want to give you my peace. Should have worn my t-shirt today. I got a t-shirt that says, no Jesus, no peace. No Jesus, no peace. The first no is N-O. No Jesus, no peace. The second no is K-N-O-W. Know Jesus, and you'll know peace. See, when you have Jesus in your heart, you have peace in your heart, right? Peace in your mind, peace in your life. And, and it's supernatural. Like Paul said, it transcends all understanding. Did you see that? Read that with me. The peace of God transcends all understanding. Watch this now. In other words, things can be falling apart all around you, going crazy all around you. But something within you. Is peaceful. You just know, hey, God's got this thing. I mean, the, the wheels are falling off the wagon. I got peace. Because what? Because I know Him. I know who He is. I know whom I have believed in, and He is more than able to do what He said He would do. Come on now. How many of you know I'm telling, telling you the truth this morning? So if you want more peace, go to the Lord and get to know Him more and more and more. Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Why? Here, and Jesus just comes out and says it. For in this world you'll have trouble, trials, tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Right? 
Don't, don't be surprised about all the craziness that's going on out there and let that what? Get inside your head and heart and cause you to worry, cause you to fret, cause you to lose sleep. You just pillow your head at night in the lap of the Savior. Just pillow, pillow your head in His presence. Say, you know what, God? It doesn't, it doesn't do me any good to, to worry or fret about all this stuff, to go crazy in my mind. I can't change half of it anyway. So I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to offer it up to you in prayer, and I'm going to go to sleep like a baby. Amen. And you just go to sleep in His presence and, and just say, Lord, fill me with your peace. Fill me with your peace. Amen. 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 John 20, verse 19. On the eve of His resurrection. Are you ready for this? The first words of Jesus after His resurrection. On the evening of that first day of the week, that's Sunday evening, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders. I mean, they were shaking in their sandals. <laughs> I mean, they're... they're, they're their watches and jewelry were clicking. Man, what they did to Jesus, they're coming for us. They're coming. They're, they're going to crucify us. They're going to scourge us. They're going to whip us. They, the doors were locked. And I think the candles were out. Jesus came in and stood among them. And what did He say? Peace be with you. I'm here. You know what the Bible says about Jesus? One of the names, we read it again in, in, in around Christmas Eve from Isaiah 9, verse 6. Jesus is what? The Prince of Peace. Let Him, let him be the Prince over your mind. Let Him be the, the Prince over your heart and over your life. This little thing in here is going, going crazy, and this thing's going crazy. Just give it. Lord, here it is. Touch it with your peace, and He'll do it. And it won't make sense. Nope. It's, it will transcend understanding. Isaiah 32, verse 18. The Lord says about His people, My people will live not in panic attacks, anxiety disorders. No. My people will live in peaceful dwellings, in secure homes, in undisturbed places of rest. Someone needs to claim that Scripture right there. Yeah. You know what? When people come into your house and my house, when people come into this house, the house of the Lord, you know what ought to, I mean, outside of, first of all, the love of the Lord, they ought to sense the love of the Lord when they come through the door, through us, in us, and around us, about us, and in spite of us. But the second thing people ought to experience when they come to church and come into your house, you know what it should be? Peace. Peace. How many of you know every room has a climate? It's okay. I know your, your wife is sitting next to you. Don't act like you know what I'm talking about. I can walk into the house and I know whether she's upset or not. Haven't seen her, haven't heard her. I'm like, ho. Oh. <laughs> and I can walk into the house when everything's going right. Peace greets me. Come on, I haven't, great, I haven't greeted anybody except the dog. The dog always. <laughs> He's so happy to see me. If I can get my wife to greet me like Brizzo, I'm doing good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> there went the peace. There went the peace. There went the peace. <laughs> How many of you know rooms have atmospheres and climates? Yes. You can sense it. You go to work, there's been an argument in the workroom, in the, in, the, in the conference room. Everybody's out of there. You walk into that thing, oh, oh, oh hey, oh. Hey. <laughs> you can feel it. Come on now. You know what I'm talking about. And, and God wants your house, my house, this house to be what? Filled with peace. And He wants our lives, come on now, to be filled with peace. Oh, it's so, and you just, you just rest. It's, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Matter of fact, Psalm 133 says, it's so good when people dwell together in what? In unity, in peace. Hallelujah. All right, the next P, be prepared. Be prepared. Is this it? Is this the last one? Is this number seven? Say it is, Pastor. Say it is. Be prepared. Be prepared. 
Matthew 24, Jesus said, About the day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking. Sounds like today. Marrying and being given in marriage. Sounds like today. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And then they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how Jesus says it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken, the other left. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. We need to what? We need to stay ready and we need to stay prepared for the coming of the Lord. This is the time to go all in. I told you at the beginning of this year, this is the season for all hands on deck. No, it's time to get out of the grandstands and get onto the playing field of, of Christian ministry and Christian life, Christian living. Some of you have been playing church. It's time to be the church, right? It needs to go beyond your belief and confession to a lifestyle, to living for the Lord and being prepared for His coming. 1 Peter 3, verse 15, In your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer. To everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. The hope of what? The hope of salvation, the hope of heaven. But do this with gentleness and respect. We need to be not only prepared for the coming of the Lord, but we need to be prepared to witness for the Lord. We need to be prepared to share with family members and friends why we're Christians, why we believe in the Lord, why we're expecting to go to heaven. We need to be prepared for that. I, I told many in Hope this past week, you know, I'm working on a message in my heart. It's, it's entitled, Why Am I a Christian? And I'm going to preach that. It's going to be a series of messages. There's about five or six reasons why I'm a Christian and why you're a Christian. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, didn't I share that with you? Okay, I thought it was you. And, uh, and so, so. <laughs> How many of you know we can have fun in church? Right. Amen. But I did. And, and why we, because we need to know why. Why are you a Christian? Why do you go to church? I mean, really. People are curious, and we need to give them the truth. We need to give them solid reasons, solid reasons. And, and, and I, I can't wait for the Lord to release me and, uh, and, and, and share that with you, because I believe it will be a blessing to you and, and to your walk with the Lord and your witness for Him. 2 Timothy 4, verse 2, preach the Word, share the Word, right? Proclaim the Word of God. Be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. You know, in other words, we need to be ready. We need to be prepared at all times to share our hope in the Lord, our love for the Lord, right? Sometimes ministry opportunities come in the strangest of places. Can I share one that happened to me last night? Yes. I'm going to the gas station. Yes. All right? It's about, what time was it, honey? Uh, 8.30, 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock. In the gas station, dark out, right? In my jammies. <laughs> got my tab truck. Got my jammies on. Kids were at, Pete, Hope had, Pete, Hope had a bunch of, of her friends over last night, and they, they were hungry. So we ordered them some food, and we were all out of pop. And uh, Mama sent me on a run to go get some pop. So I hop, I'm, 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 I'm ready for bed. All right, I'll just, no one's going to see me. All, all the good tabbers are asleep. I go to the gas station in my jammies. I get the pop. I'm coming out. And all of a sudden, you know, I kind of say, I open up the door and put it in, and there's this guy staring at me. Gets out. Oh, dear God in heaven. Comes over. Don't know <laughs> Pastor Tim. Oh, I, I wanted to go. <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Pastor Tim. I can't believe it's you. I said, I can't believe it's me either. <laughs> Comes around the tab truck. Says, 
We were just talking about you today. Oh, God, forgive me, for I know not what I do, right? He goes, did you see the thing about the red heifers? I said, yes, I did, brother. I said, what's your name? He told me a name. He goes, we've never come to the tab, but we watch you online. Me and my wife. Can I FaceTime her right now? She's not going to believe. We were just talking about you this morning. She's not going to believe that I'm talking to you at Circle K. I said, I don't believe it either. <laughs> He calls her. And I'm like. <laughs> All professional, you know. How you doing? And we talk for about 15 minutes about the second coming, about the rapture of the church, the significance of the five red heifers that landed in Israel on Friday. And, and people start congregating. People start pulling up. And he goes, hey, pastor, will you pray for us? Will you pray for us right now? I said, absolutely, brother. I put my arm around him. I'm praying for him. He's praying. Like, got the wife on FaceTime. And people are going by. You never know. You got to be ready in season and out of season. And, and the good news is, is God can even use us in our jammies. In God gracious and good. What are you talking about? They're online right now. And they're online right now. Hello. <laughs> hey, come to church. Come to church. We're making room for you. Amen. You got to be ready. You just never know. I thought, well, thank, thank God I had, you know, good breath by then, right? <laughs> I looked horrible. I mean, I, sleep was in my eyes. But you got to be ready in season, right? Be prepared. Be prepared. Hallelujah. The last scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Oh, this is such a good scripture. No eye has seen. No ear has heard. No human mind has conceived. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. See, we're, we got to stay prepared for Jesus, right? We got to stay prepared in our witness for him our love for him. But here's the good news. Oh, this is so good. God says, I'm preparing for you. Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And when your place is ready, I'll come back and I'll get you. See, God's going into heaven right now and he's preparing a place for us that our eyes have never seen. Our ears have never heard. Our minds can't even conceive how great and grand heaven is. I mean, it's going to blow us away. I mean, think about the most beautiful place you've ever... Just let your mind go as large as it wants to go, as far as it wants to go, and heaven is going to trump that by about a million. It's going to be so wonderful. It's going to be so wonderful. And God's preparing for you. God's preparing for me. As I close today, I want to ask one simple question. Are you prepared to meet the Lord? Do you have peace within your heart? Are you at peace with God right now? That if Jesus would come back today or next Sunday or the Sunday after that, or you would go in death to see him before the rapture of the church, are you prepared to meet the Lord? If you're not, I would love to lead you in a prayer of salvation, inviting Jesus to come and to save you from your sins, to reconcile you in your relationship with Him. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes today? If you're here this morning and you would say, Pastor Tim, I'm not prepared to meet the Lord. I'm not ready to die. I don't have peace with God, but I want to. If that's you, my friend, would you pray this prayer out loud with me and all your friends here at the tab? And we're going to pray it in unison and in agreement with one another in support of you. Pray this prayer to God and mean it with every atom of your being. Say these words out loud. Dear God, I come before you this morning, a sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life. Be my Lord and Savior. And help me live for you 
all the days of my life. And help me be a witness for you all the days of my life. Until you come for me in the rapture of the church. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and amen and amen. Would you put your hands together? <laughs> Hallelujah.